Good morning, everyone. We're so excited that you've joined us here at The Water's Edge. And if you're online with us today, make sure to check us out on Facebook or YouTube and feel free to like, share, and comment. And if you're live with us, here's a few things we'd like you to know. We have Nursery and Kids Church available across the lobby. And as always, we're always in need of volunteers. So if you want to get plugged in, you can email us at watersedgevolunteer at gmail.com or you can text your contact info to 337-352-2443. And remember, if you know anyone that's struggling, invite them to church or share our online content with them. Because this is a place where broken people belong and everyone is welcome. We have a full experience for you this morning, so get ready to worship and receive a message from Pastor Tony.
gathered at the highest storm, welcomed by a melody, an anthem I have always known, a song that always been in me. All glory and honor, dominion and power to you. A million angels fall, face down on the floor, all to echo holy, it is the Lord, my heart can't help. Amazing time of worship with the Water's Edge Band. And I'd like to take this time to thank you for partnering with us in helping, serving, and feeding those in our community. And if you're interested in giving, here's a few ways you can do that. You can use your camera on your phone and scan the barcode on the screen. This will take you to our Square Giving platform. You can also visit watersedgegathering.com where you can download our app and simply click on the giving link. 
Another way is you can text your dollar amount to 337-223-9003 or you can mail a check to P.O. Box 572, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 70602 or 2760 Power Center Parkway, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 70607. Now let's prepare our hearts and our minds for a message from Pastor Tony. What's up everyone? Good morning and welcome to our online Water's Edge Sunday morning worship experience. Once again, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and tuning in. For those of you that continue to share these online digital worship experiences with your friends and family, thank you so much for doing that. Continue to share that. In fact, many people in our comments will say that they shared it. We have people tuning in from all over the place. Also, for those of you that continue to give online, thank you so much for your love and for your generosity. It helps us love people and help people and serve people and feed people. In our most recent food pantry, we fed over 2,000 people, all because of your generosity. We had over 300 people came through on our block party for our neighborhood, all because of your generosity. Our next food pantries and service projects that we have, we're only able to do that simply because of your love and your giving and your generosity. So thank you so much for doing that. It allows you and our church together to be a big blessing to our community, and that shows people God. You know, sometimes life can be very, very frustrating. We just started the summer, which means we just started hurricane season, which means we need home insurance. And last week, I get a letter in from my home insurance company saying that they've dropped our entire area. They've went bankrupt, and so they're no longer a company anymore. And I have 12 days to find new home insurance, and this is right as hurricane season starts. Sometimes life is just frustrating, and we would just love to ignore it and sleepwalk around it. And so today we continue with our current series entitled Sleepwalker. And in this series, we're trying to answer one basic question. What is it in your life right now that you're ignoring, that you're not dealing with? And when we talk about sleepwalking in this series, we're always going to refer back to these two definitions. And this is what they are. The first one is the word inevitable. And the word inevitable means this. It means an outcome that you cannot avoid or evade. If something is inevitable... It is going to happen. But when we talk about sleepwalking in this series, this is what we mean. We're going to talk about the hesitation or the delay in dealing with what you know is inevitable if a change is not made in your life. If I'm walking down the highway towards an 18-wheeler, if I don't get off of that path, the inevitable will be that we're going to collide and I'm not going to like the results. But I can change that inevitable result if I make a change. And so when we talk about sleepwalking, we're talking about the hesitation in dealing with what we know we need to deal with because if we don't, the inevitable will happen and most of the time, we're not gonna like the results. It's the casting aside. It's the putting off of dealing with that pathway that this problem is on in your life, this health problem, this financial problem, this relationship problem, this emotional problem, this mental battle, this storm, or this problem with your faith. It's sleepwalking around it, pushing it aside over and over and over again and not dealing with it. But as people of faith, why should we? Why should we deal with these issues? Because basically we have to understand that the world is supposed to view us in a way that causes them to be curious about our relationship with God. Jesus said this in a very familiar passage in Matthew chapter 5. He says, you're the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds, let your life shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. In this very familiar passage, Jesus states that as people who know Jesus, 
love Jesus, worship Jesus, and follow Jesus, that this is true about our life, that sometimes there's a visible difference about who we are compared with other people in the world. And that doesn't mean that when people look at just our outside, they can see that we follow some sort of dress code or some sort of code that's different than everyone else, and so they can visibly see that we're different. That's not what that means. It means that they can visibly see that we love different. They can visibly see that we forgive different. They can visibly see that we accept a different but they can also visibly see that when storms overwhelming storms strike our life that people of faith who try to follow Jesus want to deal with these storms these overwhelming exhausting storms in a wise way in a loving way in a Christ-like way and in a mature way because this honestly doesn't make sense to the world next passage Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 5 for the light makes everything visible that's why it said awake O sleeper stop sleepwalking rise up from the dead and Christ will give you light but this is what he means so be careful how you live how do we live in the light he says this don't live like fools but live like those who are wise wake up stop sleepwalking stop putting off dealing with this issue because if you do if you keep putting it off, the inevitable will happen and you're not going to like the result and that's not wise. If you want to discover God's will in this life, it's very simple. Ask this question, what's the wisest thing I can do? In the scripture, God's will was wisdom. And so it's very wise to deal with those internal battles that we know that we need to deal with and stop putting it off. And so in this series, I want to talk to you about some very, very specific things that many times you and I all have the tendency to cast aside, put off dealing with, and sleepwalk around. Now I told you, in this series over the next several weeks, this is going to be like free therapy. We're all going through a lot. Our area is going through a lot. And so what we're going to talk about over the next several weeks from the scripture is basically what a therapist would talk to you about and deal with you on. We're just going to deal with it in a wise way from the word of God. And so this is going to be very, very helpful. And so as we continue today in this series, this is the very specific issue that I want to talk to you about today. If you're still with me, say I'm still with you. This is what we many times sleepwalk around as it starts to build up behind the scenes, as it starts to arise behind the scenes. And when this one thing in our life that many times we sleepwalk around, when it arises, it usually does three things. And this is what they are. And remember this today. If you're still with me, Sam, still with you. Sometimes it feels right and justified, number one, but it scares us all the time, number two, and it never feels right afterwards, number three. And let's just be honest, sometimes it feels right and justified because you've been lied to, you've been hurt, you've been deceived, you've been rejected, you've been taken advantage of, you've been used, you've been manipulated, or you've been broadsided by pain. And so sometimes this feels right and justified. But during those times when this undealt with thing arises that we normally sleepwalk around during these times we can convince ourselves that letting this loose is right and justified it feels that way because sometimes something outside of you provoked that reaction from you but when it does arise and it scares us this is why it scares us all the time and remember this today because it reminds us of how quickly we can put very negative and sometimes destructive energy into motion. And when you come face to face with this about yourself, it'll always scare you because in reality, you don't ever want to be this person. You don't ever want to let this energy loose in your life to put it into motion. And then when you do realize this is not the person that I wanted to be, especially when this negative energy that you put into motion finds targets, targets on the people around you. When you do this, it'll always dim your light as someone who says that they love Jesus. And so when we really start to think about it and the possibilities that this one thing produces, then deep down we know, I don't want to go down that pathway. I don't want to be this person. 
But now when we do sometimes let this one thing take over, afterwards it never feels right. But you know, if we're going to have an honest conversation about this one thing, the negative and sometimes destructive energy that sometimes you and I can put into motion and it can find targets, targets onto other people. We know it's not always provoked though. This one thing, if we're going to be honest, we know that this one thing is not always provoked by what other people have done to you. Sometimes it's just life and what life has done to you. But this one thing is provoked specifically when this happens. And notice this today. If you're still with me, so I'm still with you. When certain painful circumstances that are out of your control make you feel like this is undeserved and unfair. Now, when this happens, when the circumstances and storms strike your life and it all seems very undeserved and it all seems very unfair, this is when it becomes very difficult to not release this negative and sometimes destructive energy into motion. And this is because this one thing has brought you to a place in your life where you feel like you're constantly living on the edge of frustration no matter what it seems like something else is always stacking the quarters on top of each other and it always brings you to the edge of frustration and sometimes it brings you over the line and you call and it causes you to put this destructive and negative energy into motion because the pain didn't feel deserved and the storm and the confusion and the uncertainty just didn't feel deserved and it all kind of felt unfair and so now you feel like you're living on the edge of frustration and this is when it doesn't take much to put this energy into motion and this is what the energy is and we probably have all figured this out by now if you're still with me Sam still with you notice this today it's anger this negative energy that we sleepwalk around that many times we release into motion onto targets people in our life is anger and even when this happens, even when it's not caused by people, but uncontrollable, unfair, undeserved circumstances, even when this happens, notice this today, sometimes it feels right and justified, but it scares us all the time, and it never feels right afterwards. This is anger. And honestly, the reason that we need to deal with this the reason why we need to deal with anger is because it'll always eat you alive on the inside and it'll always dim your light as a lover of Jesus. And most people will tell you that you're right and justified, but obviously people of faith should respond differently. Notice Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 through 27. Notice what the missionary says. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. This isn't wise. And so sometimes you're going to have this energy arise in you. You're going to be angry, but don't sin by letting anger overtake you and cause you to react in ways that you wish you could take back, in ways that you never wanted to be. Don't let it dominate you. James chapter 1, verses 19 through 20. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce Produce the righteousness that God desires. But it feels righteous at the time, doesn't it? It feels right and justified. Remember, God's will is wisdom. And if you want to do God's will, understand you have to do the wisest thing possible. And it's not the wisest thing possible to let anger control you and to release that negative and destructive energy onto people targets around you this will always dim your light and it'll cause people to think that your faith is a joke so let's take this conversation a little bit further anger just like resentment and frustration they all share a theme they all have something in common and this is what it is and remember this today it is negative and sometimes destructive energy that is being put into motion and not many of us enjoy these feelings do we we don't because afterwards, we think, that's not who I want to be. And many times, people feel ashamed for dealing with anger and having these feelings. It produces so much guilt and shame. Most of us feel like we should be able to manage these feelings, especially people who say that they're people of faith, especially people who say that they love Jesus. Almost like we should never allow ourselves to be angry with a family member. We should never allow ourselves to be angry with a spouse or a lover or a boss or a co-worker or this uncontrollable 
unbelievable storm that seems unfair. If I'm really a person of faith, then I should never allow myself to, myself to be angry. And all of these feelings produce shame. And honestly, anger produces and brings up all of these questions in our mind. Like this, this inner dialogue. Is this anger or do I feel ashamed? Is this resentment or am I not feeling respected? Is this frustration or am I unable to focus? Is this because of my past and my scars and my wounds? Or am I feeling overlooked, misunderstood and lonely? And honestly, these are all negative questions that make anger worse. So to better deal with anger, we have to ask better questions. Specific questions, questions like this. And remember these questions today because this is the teaching part. This is what will help you. When feeling angry, always ask yourself, number one, if you're still with me, Sam's still with you. What boundary is being crossed? Givers in this life always have to set boundaries because takers in this life never will and they will always cross the line. In fact, selfish takers will always call boundary setters selfish for setting boundaries. But you will continue to let anger surface in your life and spill out onto other people if you keep letting takers cross boundaries. And so find your boundaries, set them Hold the line and stick to them. Question number two. How have I not expressed myself clearly about your needs, about your hurt, about your pain, about your triggers, about your boundaries? Express yourself clearly and never expect people to understand what you're going through until you're very clear about what you're going through. Sorry, I just had to swat a fly away from my mouth because I don't want to swallow it while I'm trying to talk to you. Question number three, if you're still with me, so I'm still with you. What and how can I express myself in a way that will be authentic, Christ-like, and not just a reaction? How can I be clear but gentle? Because that's Christ-like. How can I be firm but loving? Because that's Christ-like. How can I practice self-respect and humility? Because that's Christ-like. These are not enemies with each other. This is how people of faith should respond. When dealing with anger, James says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. But that doesn't necessarily help you when it's your personal, undeserved, unfair storms that strike your life. And that causes you to live on the edge of frustration. And that produces anger in you simply for the fact that life isn't fair. Being quick to listen and slow to speak doesn't necessarily help you unless you're angry with someone. But the same principle applies when dealing with any kind of anger. And so let's just put it this way. If you're still with me, Sam, so still with you. This will help you. When the negative energy of anger surfaces in your life, be quick to hesitate and slow to react. That's what James was saying. Be quick to listen, slow to speak. In other words, be quick to hesitate, slow to react. This is the God-given truth, the God-given pathway, the God-given principle that will act as a straitjacket that will help you bring your anger under control the next time you're tempted to release that destructive energy and put it into motion onto other people in your life. Always remind yourself, be very quick to hesitate and very slow to react because if we don't learn to do this then this will absolutely be true always and we're not going to want this for our life and this is what we mean and remember this again today sometimes it'll feel right and justified but it'll scare you all the time and it never feels right afterwards and so this is when we actually need to think forward I told my son Jagger the other day, anytime you're tempted to think backwards and go backwards, always tell yourself, think forward and go forward. If it never feels right, if anger never feels right afterwards, then when you're tempted to do it, before you give in to it, think forward to what it always does to you afterwards. If it never feels right afterwards, then before you give in to it, think forward to how it always makes you feel afterwards and put on that straight jacket of being quick to hesitate and very slow to react because when your life looks like this then your life will always look like something else and this is what it is 
a city of lights on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, we want you to know that if you're a local listener, our live in-person services are back. We are back live and in-person every single Sunday at 930 and 1115. It's pretty safe. Come hang out with us. It's fun. It's a great experience online, but it's something different in person. We would love to see you there, and we hope you have a great week, and we cannot wait to see you back next week. What a great message from Pastor Tony. We really hope you enjoyed today's worship experience, and we hope it has encouraged you and helped you in some way today. And if you're moved by today's service and want to stay tuned the rest of the week on social media, you can check us out at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. You can also download our app where you can do online giving, listen to worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. If you want to know more about salvation and baptism, want to volunteer, or need a prayer request, you can visit our welcome center in the lobby, and our volunteers will take down your information. We absolutely love you guys and can't wait to see you back next week at the Water's Edge, where everybody has a place to belong.